Welcome. Um, today I'm going to talk about factoring by grouping, and specifically I'm going to do ones uh, like setups that have x squared plus x plus something else, a constant term, and they have something in front of the x squared. I've got a number there, coefficient. Um, I also do this same type of work using the technique called slide and divide. So you might see factoring quadratics uh, using slide and divide in a set if you search around, or I may have it in a, a playlist already. But that method, I like it way more. Some math teachers don't like that method. They like grouping better because slide and divide is really sort of a uh, manipulation of what the numbers are. And they think that this has more mathematical validity because you have to look at factors and all this other stuff. But really, to me, math is a language. And we stopped using it as a language a long time ago in terms of math in high school. We stopped using it as a language a long time ago. And now we just use it as like some sort of, I don't know, sometimes it just seems like we're using it as torture. But anyway. Um, if there's no science behind it, the math is pointless. There's that. But uh, in this case, I'm going to show you factoring by grouping. I'm not in love with the method. It's not that big of a deal. The biggest issue that you need to deal with is just the idea of separating this middle term into two parts. And then I'll have four terms total. So like if this was five, it could be four plus one. And then I could put the first section here and then here, and then do a little bit of greatest common factor factoring, and everything's nice, fine, and dandy. And you'll see how it works. It's not that really big of a deal, or it's not a really big deal, I should say, but it is one of those things that you should probably see as you move forward. So let's get to some of them. By the way, the template that I have here, I found it somewhere, and I cannot remember the life of me who made it. It's kind of neat. It's a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, elementary than I'm used than I'm used to. But I kind of liked it, so thanks for making. I'm sorry if I don't give you credit. Anyway, um, from here, I need to factor it out. But the first thing I need to do before I factor anything else is to see if there's a greatest common factor, and there totally is because I know if I'm doing my threes in my head, three times six is eighteen, three times seven is twenty-one, and three times ten is thirty. So I need to pull a common factor out. I have a video on factoring out greatest common factor, so there's no reason for me to sit here or uh, to do sing simple factorization. So there's no reason for me to go through that process again, at least in my head. Now, from here, I need to look and see uh, what the first number, the initial coefficient, leading coefficient, and the constant term are. It's 6 and 10. So in order to factor them properly, I'm going to do 6 times 10 and get 60. Now what I'm going to do with 60 is look for factors. The, f re the thing that I'm trying to do is figure out, okay, well, what can I do to give me this 7 that I'm looking for? That's kind of where it's all headed in all the great and grand wonderful things that I could possibly be doing. So for 60, I want to do 1 and 60. I want to do 2 and 30. I want to do 3 and 20. 4 and 15, 5 and 12, 6 and 10, and I think that's it as far as that goes. Now what I need to do is look to see, okay, well, are there any of these groups that will give me 7? Well, yeah, 12 and 5 will give you 7, and I want it to be negative 7, so that means I need to set it up as minus 12. So I'm going to rewrite just this set. We're going to remember that this 3 is over here forever in all times. Um, so I'm going to really sort of set this up as 6n squared, because I didn't really fiddle with that very much, minus 12n plus 5n minus 10. See how it all looks pretty and it'll give you the same exact thing. I'm just breaking the middle out of it. Okay, so from here, I'm going to say like, okay, well, let's look at this first set here. So 6n squared minus, I don't know why I started to make a plus there. Must have been thinking about something else. Minus 12n. And I'm sort of going to treat it a little bit separate. So I'm going to put a little space here. I could put a parenthesis, but I think that would be confusing for no reason. Uh, 5n minus 10. Now I'm going to look at these separately and see if there's anything that they have in common, uh, or that they have in common between the two terms, so any common factors. Uh, well, obviously 6 comes out here, and also they have an n involved, so that's good. So I'm left with n, and then if I took 6 in from here, I'd get 2 left over. On the other side, I see that I have um, 5 they have in common, and they also have, um, that's it. So. 5, and then I deal with n minus 10 divided by 5 is 2. 
Here's the reality of the situation. You can see that the parts in parentheses are exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do is sort of rewrite it in a different way where I have n minus 2 as its own little setup, its own little scenario. So instead of going back in and doing this and this and this and this, I'm going to take the n minus 2 here and then I'll bring down the 6n plus 5. And then of course our 3 from the very beginning. So my final answer is 3 times 6n plus 5 and n times n minus 2. So let me check to make sure I'm right because sometimes I'll do these and do them wrong. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, so the big issue there is just to make sure that the sign on your numbers works out. So this part should make negative 7. If I put plus 12 and minus 5 here, it would have given me positive 7, and I don't want that. So take the first num number and the last number, multiply them together, find the factors that will give you the middle term, work those numbers out in a way that will give you that middle term, and then just see if you have any common factors in each set. And hopefully you'll have a common common factor, that kind of thing. So uh, let's look at another one. In this one, um, there's definitely a common factor here because everything either ha has a 5 in it at some point. It's in the front or in the back, and when there are only two digit numbers, you can pretty much assume that the 5 is going to be a common factor. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the common factor out. So 5 times 10 m squared, 95 divided by 5 is 19 m. And then, ooh, that was maybe the worst m I'd written in a very long time, and that's saying something. And then minus 15. There's no common factor there, so the 5 kind of sits on the outside until we're ready for it. Now I'm going to deal with the idea of uh, 10 times 5. Or 10 times 15, I'm sorry. Which would be 150. Now I need to do a factor list of 150. So I deal with 150 and 1. Uh, 100 and, or sorry, 75 and 2. 50 and 3, 30 and 5. What I'm looking for, remember, is the 19 thing, which really hasn't happened for me yet. 25 and 6. And there's my match that I've been searching for ever so desperately. So in this case, I want them to uh, work it out to where I get positive 19. And as you can see, the 25 here is the bigger number, that, so that's going to have to be the plus part of this. So the 5 still on the outside. I do a 10m squared plus 25m minus 6m minus 15. Now, if you pick a set of factors and you can't get it to work out to be the type of number that you want in the middle, it's possible that's not the right set. Sometimes adding or subtracting factors will give you the same number, but you just have to make sure that you choose the one that gives you the most appropriate um, mathematical setup in terms of how the numbers are all worked. So from here, I'm going to deal with um, breaking this off into its own piece, sort of a little bit of a separation there. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of trickery here and make this minus 6m plus 15. So I'm going to do this. That's where that's all headed. Um, so from And this is kind of like the big... See how separating them out with parentheses makes it even more complicated looking? Anyway, uh, the f 5 goes in here, and there's also an m involved, so 5m. Uh, take this away, it ends up with 2m. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So that's looking pretty good. On the other side of it, I'd say that 3 is involved. Uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. The m's still left over. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And as you can see, once again, this part and this part, the little parentheses stuff, would be exactly the same thing, which means 2m plus 5, and then 5m minus 3. And don't forget to bring down your 5 at the front. Now, the reason that this works, by the way, is because when you, if you went backwards, you did this times this. Well, this would have to do this and this if we were doing the uh, uh, foil, I guess is what you might call it. I usually just refer to it as distributive property. And then negative 3 would have to go back in. It's just me rewriting it in a nice organized fashion. So let's make sure that one's right. And then I'm going to do one more 
and then I'm going to be done because why wouldn't I be? And really, you'll notice that a lot of times they tend to put the 2n plus 5 in their answer first. It doesn't make any difference because of the fact that you're multiplying and that operation is commutative. So it doesn't make one bit of difference which one you do. Finally, one that's a little bit easier to do. I'm going to see if the last one uh, makes any more sense for us to be bothering with. And the answer is not really. So I'll just do the 4x squared plus 9x plus 2. I have a bunch to choose from. I'm trying to try choose ones that make some sense. This one does not have a common factor. It just doesn't. Nothing goes into 4, 9, and 2 other than 1. So we're done as far as that's concerned. So no little weird thing on the side that you have to remember. Now I'm going to deal with uh, 4 and 2. 4 times 2 is 8, so I need to do a factor list, and whatever's going to give me 9, well, 1 and 8 is the only thing that's going to give you 9, because 2 and 4 sure isn't going to get you there. So what I'm going to do is use this setup, and I'm going to split this out as 4x squared plus um, 8x, maybe, plus 1x plus 2. So I'm sort of left with this kind of setup here. So I'll break this part off separately. I'll leave a bunch of space and I'll go over here and do this. In this case they both have 4 in common and they also both have x in common. You take the 4 and the x away from this one, what you're left with is x. You take 4 away here, or you do the division, 8 divided by 4 is 2. On the other side they really don't have much that you can work with, but you can take 1 out of it anytime you want. Take the 1 away, you get that. 2 divided by 1 is 2, so you end up with this. So you'll see x plus 2 and 4x plus 1. So that's the setup for factoring by grouping. If you're doing a quadratic uh, sort of setup, or x squared is as far as it goes, that kind of thing. Not really super difficult to get correct, but, uh, you know, I like slide and divide better, but maybe you don't. So I hope this is helpful to you, and uh, if you have questions, just send them in, and I'll try to address those via video as well.